Hello. In this lecture, I will briefly introduce deliberative democracy as an approach which not only is of high relevance for environmental politics, but also for environmental and sustainability education. For proponents of deliberative democracy, the essence of democracy is deliberation rather than voting, interest, aggregation or rights. Or to put it another way, the essence of democratic legitimacy is the capacity of those affected by a collective decision to deliberate in the production of that decision. According to Gottman and uh, Thompson, deliberative democracy has four characteristics. First, it is a reason-giving process in which agents take part in presenting and responding to reasons. Second, it is a public process. Third, it is a process aiming at uh, pro producing a decision. And fourth, it is a dynamic and continuing process. Furthermore, they add that the participants should try to find justification that minimizes their differences with their opponents. That is to say that it should move towards consensus. Deliberative democracy is interpreted in different ways and heavily debated also. However, despite criticism, it is often stated that we in the recent decades have experienced a deliberative turn in the theoretical debate on democracy. It is probably too much to say that we have also experienced a deliberative turn in the democratic practices as well. However, try to take a look at the page in the internet www.participidea.net. It contains a database with more than 200 participatory methods which are used all over the world. Deliberative democracy is not least of relevance in relation to environmental and sustainability issues because they always implies social conflicts, dilemmas and value choices which obviously can be informed but not answered by science. We need in all cases collective dialogue with a reflection about what will be right to do in every case. The, the deliberative democracy uh, processes can even be global. An example is in relation to climate change, where a network of deliberative democratic facilitating organizations have coordinated their efforts in what they call worldwide views. 44 meetings in 38 countries were held at the same time, each of them with 100 people representing a variety of the population. The applied methods was the same, and after the deliberation process, the participants were voting on answers to key questions, and the resource was collected and in, uh, and in a joint recommendation to the Global COP15 meeting in 2009. Since then, a lot of other worldwide view uh, deliberation has been organized. The idea of deliberative democracy are also present in some of the recent approaches to environmental and sustainability education. Here I will first mention that in Sweden, Johan Oeman and Leif Östman and other researchers have made a differentiation between fact-based, normative and pluralistic environmental education. And the pluralistic approach is about educating students to be competent agents in deliberative communicative processes on environmental issues. Secondly, I would mention the concept of social learning. It has been used in several different ways in educational theory, but in relation to environmental and sustainability education, Adrian Walsh have promoted an approach to social learning as a process of de- and reframing an environmental issue in a dialogical process among different agents. Linking deliberative democracy with theory of learning points to the importance of understanding the social, cultural and psychological dynamics influencing deliberative processes and how change agents might cope with them 
uh, as mediators and facilitators of social learning. One key issue here is the dialogue between professionals with their scientific exp expertise and lay people with their local experiential knowledge. So, to summarize, deliberative democracy is about active citizen participation, which is transboundary in the sense that it facilitates dialogue among different agents in order to qualify democratic decisions. The conflictual and wicked character of environmental and sustainability issues points to the relevance of using deliberative democracy in methods as vehicles of sustainable transitions in a continuing process of social learning. Environmental and sustainability education, informal education, might support this with a pluralistic approach developing students' competence in deliberative communication.